Gentlemen, we do not stop till nightfall. What about into the radius? We've already had it. We've had one, yes. What about second into the radius? Hi guys and welcome back. So with the sequel in the works, the guys over at CM Games have delivered their final major update for Into the Radius. They've called this The Little Things and they've added some very welcome quality of life updates. Here are the four main features of this. The first one is that if you're inside a safe house inside the radius when the tide hits, you'll be safe from teleportation. Everything will still reset, but you'll remain in place as long as you're inside a hideout. Number two is that the computer is now more useful at letting you know if a high priority mission is available and if it's not, it will clearly indicate how many side missions you need to complete first. Number three is that we now have more collectibles to scrounge for. So we've probably all come across a few of the white items inside the radius, but now we have Pecho, our beloved radius friend. There are three of them in the game, and if you're trying to find them but you don't want a guide, just do the main story and they should appear. And they will give completionists out there something else to find as a display for their base. For those of you who don't know, Pecho is the nickname given to a beloved non-hostile spawn that would randomly appear from time to time. Instead of attacking, he'd just kind of jiggle about and jump around. Whether it was intended or not, those who knew about him would always love to see this happy little fella. Sadly, the devs seem to have removed him, but they honored his memory with these plushies. And I don't know if they ever plan on making real plushies, but CM Games, if you do release a real life plushie, I want one. And finally, the biggest change is that they've now added a revolver. It uses the same rounds as the Desert Eagle, and now we can finally get our ocelot on and fan the hammer cowboy style. This is the greatest handgun ever made. But now it's time to talk about the sequel. And at this point, everything is just speculation. CM Games have stated on their Discord that they don't make their roadmaps public because, well, their plans may change over time, depending on what they feel is best use of their time and energy. But I've chatted to some of my viewers during my streams, and here's what I'd like to see in the sequel. The first is obviously a new story, and I'd like to have the sequel to have more lore explained and maybe more dialogue options. There was only so much info we got from Katia and her freaky ramblings, so it'd be great to find out a bit more about what really happened out there. The good news is, according to their Discord, it seems like this is exactly what CM Games are planning. The second one is new anomalies and methods to deal with them, so it'll be really interesting to see what new anomalies they come up with, but honestly, I hated the lightning anomalies with a passion. Especially in some of the cluster areas, I would always lose a ton of health with these. I always wanted a way of dealing with them permanently, or at least longer than two seconds, so I'm really hoping that they allow for more ways to deal with the anomalies. Number three is stealth options. Honestly, stealth just isn't a thing in this game, and I think it really could be. I could be hiding in a building, peering through a window, and suddenly a mimic policeman 100 meters away magically knows where I am and starts engaging. Improving the AI here I think could be a really big deal, as I think it would allow for a completely different style of play suited to the player's liking. Number four is multiplayer. Now obviously this is a big one, and we have to be really careful here. By its nature, this game is all about being alone. Oh, I'm so desperately lonely. <laughs> And the number of enemies and loot spawn points is very well balanced as it is. So for multiplayer to work, they'd have to scale the enemies up, maybe like 1.5 times as many if you're in multiplayer. I think sharing equipment is also something you'd have to be careful with, because I think we'd have to have something in place to stop a security level 5 player from giving a scar to a security level 1 newbie, for example. I feel like it would make sense to ensure that you can't give a player a weapon or any ammo that you've left your base with. Sharing meds obviously should definitely be allowed, but of course, multiplayer could definitely be a lot of fun if it's implemented well. Number five is a creature capture mechanic. Now, this is what I want as an alternative to multiplayer if they don't implement that. But this is something I've definitely been thinking about for a while, and I think this would be so, so cool. So if you bear with me for a moment, I'd like to rattle out how I see this going. Firstly, you could acquire a method of neutralizing mimics with electricity or something instead of killing them. And then you could use a Ghostbuster style method, capture those mimics and bring them back to base. Whilst back at base, the science nerds do some voodoo on it and turn it friendly and allow those to fight alongside you. You'd start out by capturing basic Mimic Policemen, and then later on in the game, you could try and capture an Armoured SWAT. This would be a high-risk, high-reward feature that I think would be amazing and would level up as the game progresses. Imagine having an Armoured Marksman on your side picking off enemies for you come late game. But anyway, thank you if you're still here listening to my nonsense. If you like this game, I do stream it regularly on this channel, as well as a few other VR titles, so please make sure you subscribe to catch me on there, and I'll see you guys later.